SMT Nation, we back. Nation, we got big updates out of Verizon and their standalone 5G network. Really exciting times. Let me tell you why it's a big deal and what this means for the company and their customers moving forward. All right, link for the article from Mobile World, uh, Mobile World Live on the SA 5G progress as a placeholder for this video will be linked in the description. Ways to support us can be found there as well. Please do like and share this video. Subscribe if you're new here. And turn on the bell notifications icon to never miss an upload from the SMT. All right, folks. So what's the update from Verizon? Well, we have markets officially launching standalone 5G and it's public, which means regular, average, everyday consumer lines are going to have access to it. Now, the, there's a couple of things we got to keep in mind. Number one, it's not national. Uh, it's going to be in very select markets. I, I, I'm guessing it's probably a handful, right? Uh, you know, the, Oakland, for example, being one of them, you know, um, that means that possibly some neighboring cities might have access, possibly some other towns in the Southwest. I think also, uh, there's probably some markets across like the, you know, the middle of the U S or Eastern U S that may be launching, uh, and you know, they've kind of been doing the beta thing, sort of, uh, what, what Verizon has been doing has been very conservative. Uh, they've been putting the standalone 5g traffic on data devices right not involving voice lines because there's got to keep in mind man it's voice over nr moving forward and and that's a technology that hasn't been easily to deploy and it hasn't been reliable and functional you know on a high level so you know verizon obviously very much in tune with the calling network they probably didn't want to chance it didn't want to risk anything failures call drops you know so they've been really conservative about that so they focused on data only lines and then moved towards voice lines here with this launch. I think additionally, I, what we can kind of expect is, you know, with more people connecting to it, they get kind of a soak. They kind of see how things are performing and it becomes more of a trial or a testing bed for them. Um, but it's really important. I'll tell you guys why. Number one, a standalone progress means that C-band and millimeter wave combinations are likely on deck. And I think they're ready to probably start putting that to the commercial network. So look out for that. That's huge. I think additionally, and this one probably very soon as well, is CBRS moving over to NR and 5G, right? Supplementing the downlink. Uh, so that'll be a huge boost if they can put 30, 40, 50, 60 megahertz of bandwidth on a secondary 5G channel aggregating with C-band and also possibly the millimeter wave piece, you could be looking at a couple of hundred of megahertz of mid-band 5G along with up to a thousand megahertz of millimeter wave. Probably creating somewhere between five and six gigabits per second for downlink. And, and you're probably looking at maybe seven or 800 megabits per second uplink, right? Depending on, on how that kind of works. We'll see. But they've been testing all these things in the lab. They've been testing all these things kind of on the back end. Now we're going to start seeing them kind of deployed. And it's a big step for Verizon. And obviously Oakland is a big market. For sure, there you know, tons of data traffic. It makes sense for them to kind of move and, and look to progress in, in locations like this. I, and then I start thinking about things like Chicago and Miami and Philadelphia and New York, Frisco, these really, really big markets, L.A., you know, they make sense kind of for like the next steps as things kind of get perfected and they work through some of the, the engineering side of all this. This is really, really exciting. Be on the lookout for the standalone network access. You do need a phone that is compatible with it. I know my iPhone iPhone 14 generation uh, does have it. I have a 14 Pro Max. The standalone feature, the SA 5G is there in the cellular settings. I don't know about the 13 generation. I'll have to check on that. So the 14, the 15, the upcoming 16 galaxies i think from the s22 on correct me if i'm wrong there i don't think the s21 has sa 5g uh but worth uh looking into and kind of doing that research you guys can comment if you kind of know uh for the pixels i think the newer ones should be covered with it um but i'm not sure again android versus ios you know enabling and, and provisioning from the networking side i don't know all right but progress making steps towards sa 5g T-Mobile kind of leading the way in that respect. Dish has been on it since day one, you know, so it's exciting to see companies kind of doing this. I know AT&T has also launched standalone 5G, uh, but they haven't really done it on many of the consumer lines and stuff like that. Um, and business lines, some people have had it, some haven't. 
if you see LT required for a connection, obviously you're not running SA 5G. Standalone 5G is only NR band. So it, we'll continue to follow this. We'll, we'll watch the evolution. We'll see how this plays out. More markets hopefully coming for Verizon. And we're excited to see this kind of take the next step towards a true 5G network with lots of capacity and reliability on deck. And of course, Verizon, you know, mobile network operators in general are excited for 5G because of cost operations, reducing cost, improving efficiency, and just getting better performance. What's your take on this? Uh, let me know if you guys are excited to test it yourself when it comes to you. Do you have a phone for it? Uh, <laughs> do you have Verizon? Let me know. Sound off in the comment section below. All the voice of the people, the SMT Nation. Let your voice be heard.